Hi, Craig Zacta, IPEX USA Guardian Products, and I'm going to demonstrate the preferred method of assembling any of our vinyl vinyl central lock systems. First off, all piping is shipped plain end, plain end. It's in 20 foot lengths for demonstration purposes. This is going to be a 20 foot length of pipe. We have molded polypropylene supports. It is a three uh, wing support. They're placed approximately every four feet along the pipe run. And as you can see, it slides freely in and inside of the containment pipe. All fittings come pre-assembled. They're centralized with our patented central lock fitting. And typically most jobs are going to be shipped this way as component parts. Um, pipe shipped in 20 foot lengths and you know, fittings boxed separately. Uh, we do prefabricate systems to exact dimensions with offsets. And if uh, that is the situation, the uh, assembly process would be slightly different, but for most jobs this is the way it's, it's going to take place. We're going to start off with a fitting. This will be our starting point and this is generally a good place to start. And if we are, for demonstration purposes, we're going to pretend that we're going to have a 20 foot length of pipe and then a cut piece of pipe so that we can achieve a dimension something greater than 20 feet between two changes of directions, this being 90 degree elbows. So we're back with our 20 foot piece of pipe. We're going to want to use standard solvent cementing procedures. Our procedures aren't going to vary from what the industry standard is. That's going to mean that we're going to want to have a beveled end uh, on all joints that are going to be solvent cemented. We're going to want to use the proper primer and the proper solvent cement. It's usually easier when you're going to be assembling a length of pipe to put on the coupling. As I mentioned earlier, pipe is shipped plain end, plain end, so you will need to order standard couplings. It is not a double containment coupling, just a standard coupling for any pipe to pipe joints. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to go through the solvent cementing. This is all going to be a dry fit. Start off with our carrier coupling. In this case, it's one inch. We're going to solvent cement that on to the pipe, slide that back in. We'll take our three inch containment coupling, solvent cement that on. We're now ready to assemble that to our first fitting. We will slide out the carrier pipe so that it's easier to handle. We'll apply primer and solvent cement to the spigot and to the one inch uh, socket on the 90 degree elbow. This will get slid in place, do our quarter turn and it's solvent cemented into place. Right after that you come back and you apply primer and solvent cement to the socket and the spigot of the carrier pipe and solvent cement that into place. We're now coming to a point where we're going to want to make a change of direction after we assemble the next piece of pipe. And since the laying dimension, that being center to stop for the carrier fitting, is less than the laying length center to stop on the containment fitting, we will have a situation where the carrier pipe is going to extend out beyond the containment pipe. So what you will want to do is slide the containment pipe in after you've properly marked where you want to cut your containment pipe, go ahead and make the cut. At this point, we're ready to go. We're going to take primer on, on the spigot end of the pipe and on the coupling, apply our, apply our solvent cement and go ahead and cement that in. We're then going to come back, apply primer and solvent cement to the hub and to the spigot of the pipe and solvent cement that into place. What we've been doing here is what we uh, term a staggered solvent cementing procedure, that being that we are doing carrier first then containment. We keep alternating in that scenario until we get to a point 
or we're going to want to do a change of direction. When we're doing a change of direction, we're going to have to do what we term a simultaneous solvent cementing procedure. And in this case, we're, we're going to want to make sure that our carrier pipe is sticking out the proper length beyond the containment so that when we put this fitting on, the carrier pipe is going to bottom out properly and the containment pipe is going to bottom out properly. We're ready to go. We're going to apply primer to both spigots, carrier and containment, both sockets, carrier and containment. Apply solvent cement to both spigots and both sockets. We'll come into place, rotate it, and our joint is made. At this point, we would go back to a staggered procedure, pipe, lengths of pipe to length of pipe till we come to the next change of direction. If you want, I'll take this apart quickly, to do a fitting to fitting, you can do that also. And that would be accomplished by simply determining the length of carrier pipe. If you wanted to butt these two fittings together, you would just solvent cement in a small piece of carrier pipe, a small stub of containment pipe. This would go on and you'd make your joint so you can do a fitting to fitting. The final thing that I'd like to show you is typically how a system is terminated. In most systems, you're either going to be coming up to grade or through a basement uh, floor or through a basement wall and you're going to want to stop the double containment and install uh, termination fitting. And we are going to do that by solvent cementing in our carrier pipe. You'll have the containment pipe solvent cemented in. In this case, I need a longer piece of pipe. We'll have our carrier pipe solvent cemented in, and you're going to want to have the sticking out uh, so that it'll allow you to apply our B termination fitting. B termination fitting is simply a coupling that has been uh, with a bushing in it. It is through board. There is a double O-ring seal. Typically, it's Viton, or on special request, we'll have EPDM. That is what makes the seal around the uh, piece of carrier pipe. And then we're going to apply solvent cement to the containment piece and the hub of the containment fitting, and that will make the seal on the containment. We are not going to put any primer or solvent cement against the O-rings. And what will happen here is, I'm going to have to slide this up a little bit. You will apply our primer and solvent cement. We're going to want to make sure that we have a real nice bevel on the carrier pipe that's sticking out. Uh, make sure there are no burrs. Make sure that this pipe of, uh, piece of pipe is real clean. Do not put primer on the carrier pipe. Make sure there are no gouges because our seal is going to be made by the O-rings that are inside of the, the fitting. I hope this is going to go through all the way, but what will happen is this will come down and through, and it won't, so let's show you this way. You would typically want to have the carrier pipe sticking out probably six inches or so beyond the edge of the containment pipe. The C-termination fitting will get slid down and into place and this is what you would have. You'd have the carrier pipe sticking out, our seal is being made up against the O-rings uh, on the carrier pipe, and we have a solvent cemented joint on the containment. These B termination fittings could, can be supplied with or without a tap. The tap would be used for uh, either as a drain on the system or to use as a pressure test means of getting air into the system to test the containment. Again, as is always the case, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the factory, 1-800-490-0077. Thank you.